Well, we finally made it. Gotta tell you though, that was like getting to the other side of a river by walking around it. Our new U-joints are installed. We're actually going to use parts of a, a different setup just because it was already pre-assembled. We took our old yoke off, which goes into our, our uh, gear here. We're going to use that, but we had to replace this, this one already, and we already had this assembly. So, and this one was installed, add A, B, and C together, and that's why that one's going to sit over there and probably go in the big pile of future use parts even though the u-joints both of them would have had to been replaced anyway because neither one of them had grease zerks so and even this one is really crusty but that one didn't really have much of a hang up but you can see it was really dry anyway so we ended up having to replace them but you could always have done you know even though we used our press this time we could have always done the whole you know put the open end socket which I guess this is uh, in this case one in the sixteenth over top of one end and put C clamp on and you know the old trick there and drive it into the inside the socket here and take off the one cap and then drive it off to the other side. Always works real easy for us, especially on drives that are already uh you know put together. Not that we change, you know, once we get the ones with the Zerks on them. They tend to stay that way, and I've never had to replace one. I never had one go bad, and actually, that's where this whole setup came from. I thought one went bad, and it ended up being the top end of the last drive. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put our bearing pack in, and like so, we're going to do it a whole lot better the next time around. Now, we're going to take our gear pack and bearing. We're going to put our seals on, we're going to put our next pack in after that. We're going to put it all together, and then we're going to put this in here, which goes in here, and then we're all going to stuff it all together. And then we shall put the rest on, and we'll see how it works out. So we're going to go ahead and get started. That way we got at least something accomplished. assembly lube along the way to make sure all the bearings were all nice and oiled up that way they'll stay that way even though the drive may sit up upright for probably I don't know another 90 days before it actually may get installed depending on the weather uh, we do use a little RTV um, if like I said after beating on this with a claw hammer and then a mall hammer and a chisel and everything else just for added security we did the outside of the bearing pack area we just put a very thin layer all the way around and uh, then retorqued everything down according to the manual and don't even attempt to take the shift cover off without a manual I mean it it, it really even the claimers uh, boards will help you out uh, 
at least visualize what's going on and have simple things in there you know most of the time like torque specs and stuff like that and that way at least you'll have that much and of course there's online manuals that will also help you out um, nothing really special to report at this point there's a we expected the rest of it to go back together. Like I said, it was working order when we took it apart. It was just getting it apart to actually fix the exterior piece. And of course, that's that's accomplished. And uh, we need to put a fine yoke on there. So we haven't put the actual U-joint uh, in yet. We're waiting on the yoke to come off of another drive. Like I said, we have we got to utilize a lot of parts off the other drive just to make it back to what we had before. Um, Another thing also we, we like to, um, when we put the shims in, uh, uh, just a little hint to keep them from falling out when you flip them over or trying just to stack them up and then set it on. It's just use a little assembly lube, put them in there, stack them on top of assembly lube, stack another one assembly lube. And it'll actually, you know, you don't have to oversaturate it. It's actually almost will actually adhesive like and it'll keep them in place until you actually set them down and then you'll be okay then. Um, Besides that, I mean, it rotates nice, everything's nice. So, we're going to have to uh, set it off to the paint shop <laughs> over there. So, once we get that done, it'll, uh, we should have our gears and we should be on to the next set, next, uh, next piece, I guess. Hey folks, welcome back. We're about to go into our paint booth and uh, inspect our Volvo upper. So, come on along. Oh, and there it is. What a lovely shade it is. I believe it's a Rust-Oleum Gloss Black. And look how well it puddled in all those places. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm sure it's not going to salt up in the future because it's definitely, definitely got it covered. Once we put the stainless back on, it's really going to pop, that's for sure. It'll definitely turn all the heads at the dock. Okay, back to something serious here. Let me put our, our paint booth down. Uh, we did definitely got our paint done. It's had about four coats on it so far. As for beating on it so hard, it definitely, uh, after a lot of sanding and a lot of, a lot of fixing, it don't look so bad. Definitely doesn't look like it's been uh, beat to death, that's for sure. So we're just letting it set up overnight and then we'll put it back uh put back all the bolts and screws and such that need to be nice and stainless steel. Now we're off to our uh 1.56 gears and we're kind of sad to say but it was almost a pleasure to take this drive apart. Our Frankenstein drive here. It's only been together for about six or eight months. So, I mean, it <laughs> it got to come apart with I don't know a six year old. Um, it was that easy. I mean, it, it, you kind of get a little head shy when you uh, have a bad one. You fall off the horse, so to speak. And once you fall off the horse, it's kind of hard to get back right on it. But in this case, I'm kind of glad I did because the drive we're doing in this video here has been a bear to say the the very least. A real bear getting things apart I mean I know I've said it before but pieces of it would have been in that box over there if not on the way to the recycling bin if we weren't actually doing this video but since it's being done and we seem to be making progress all's good uh, also we've done a whole crap load of measurements here trying to make sure everything matches up properly the gear faces all match the way they're supposed to according to the Volvo magazine or Volvo manual we have not changed anything uh, measurement wise in the rest of the drive and that was really one of the main goals from the get-go with this whole whole project we had our Frankenstein drive which was definitely had possibilities of not having things made it up perfectly but we wanted to have these 1.5 and uh, these 1.56 gears put in something that was pretty much factory I, and it, we, we found them to be so rare in the first place 
that. We really don't want to take much of a chance of destroying them. So that's why we decided to take this four cylinder drive and start from top to bottom and clean it all out. But it was all factory and everything was shimmed from the factory. And the manual even says, you know, hey, well, go, you know, don't trust the factory. Don't trust, you know, the fact that somebody else may have taken it apart. We know this one's never coming apart, ne never been apart before. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we're not going to second guess the factory. <clears throat> and on top of that, everything's in millimeters, which is totally Swedish to us. I guess we don't really have to worry about our videos being shown in Sweden because apparently they're blocked because of some obscure Blue Oyster Cult song, but that's another story for another time. But uh, yeah, you have to reset your calibers and make sure you kind of keep that in mind that you're not dealing with, you know, inches, you're dealing with millimeters. And once you get that done, we've done our measurements and due to our best, best calculations on our bottom end here, we believe that we are we have a difference of 0 .002 millimeters which according to the manual is supposed to be within spec so we're just going to go with it not that we really could make a huge change anyway I think the amount of shims we have would have the next one's a is almost a huge swing where we would almost need nothing it would require it would add probably like uh, I think the next next shim up would add another nine or ten millimeters for a 0 .003 inch shim. So it's, you know, it's too far for us. We did notice that our our gears are somewhat larger. I mean, these are our 1.56 gears. And uh, these are our 2.1618. I'm not, again, I haven't looked them up, so I'm not going to even s swear to either one, but a massive it's like a 10 speed bike I and mean, this is like first gear little tiny sprocket this one's like 10th gear <laughs> I'd love to find a 15 speed bike and maybe like a 1.3 something or something like that because the main reason I'm doing even doing this is because of the fact that I mean we even started this 1.56 hunt was because we've just run out of props and we're using a Solus 23 prop and uh, after that they don't just make things like that for Volvos anymore so next will be uh, assembling of our uh, nice and beautiful clean bottom end parts which after assembling the top end should be uh, if it's anything as easy as that then it should be a dream and, um, real easy it's really nice when you have nice clean parts and everything just fits together the way it's supposed to.